Now, let's dive right into it. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to explore how to create animations using the EBSynth utility extension, along with ControlNet in Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111. One of the great things about this extension is how user-friendly it is for animation creation. They provide a clear step-by-step -step process for generating frames for your video. Each frame is created as an image and you can set keyframes for your animation. And remember, the lower the keyframe number, the smoother and flicker-free your animation will be. In this tutorial, we're going to test two examples. In one, we'll use a higher keyframe number and in the other, we'll go with a lower keyframe number. Our goal, to create animations with minimal flickering, just like the ones you've probably seen on their GitHub page. Now, let's get started in the automatic Waven11 web UI. First things first, we need to install the extension. Head over to the extensions tab and click on install from URL. Simply copy and paste the GitHub link for this extension and don't worry, you'll find the link in the video description below. Click install and patiently wait for the download to finish. Once it's completed, go back to the installed tab, then click the button that says apply and restart UI. While we wait for the web UI to restart, let's take a moment to download some stock videos. I'm heading back to artlist.io to grab a few. You can source your stock videos from other platforms as well. Just remember to stay clear of anything with copyright restrictions. Now, let's move forward and make some mesmerizing animations. Now that we've got our extension, uh, all set up, let's jump into the first step. We're going to create an empty folder for our project, then simply copy and paste the folder's path into the project directory. Next, let's get those stock videos into action. Drag and drop them into the video panel and watch as the system automatically generates a local temporary file path in the original movie path. Once that's done, scroll down the page and it's time to click the generate button. Here's where the magic happens. The system processes the videos, extracts frames into images and creates folders in our project directory. Now onto stage two. Here, we're going to set up the keyframes for our video. Uh, remember I mentioned uh, we tried two examples, one with a higher keyframe and one with a lower keyframe. Let's start with a higher keyframe, just for some testing. Nice and easy. Click Generate. After a few seconds, it will generate the keyframe numbers and create keyframe folders in our project directory. Moving right along to stage three, where we're going to use image to image conversion to create animation frames based on the frames we extracted earlier. When you click generate in stage three, the system will guide you through the image to image process step by step. One cool thing about this extension is that it provides you with the correct width and height to use for each image. So, I'll head over to the Image to Image tab, copy the width and height set for the animation, and then set the denoising strength to 0.35, following their instructions. Before I batch process the images in image to image, I like to generate one image to get a style I like. Then I'll use the seed number of that image's style and apply it to the whole batch image to image process. This one's looking pretty nice and relevant. Let's try a few more styles. And this time I'll throw in control net with DW open pose. Once I've got everything set up to my liking, I'll apply the seed number and enable the control net features. 
After that, I'll copy and paste the input directory into the batch tab. For the output directory, I'll name it image to image underscore key, following the instructions from the EBSynth utility extension. Now, we wait for the image to image process to finish for all the frames. You can open the folder to check the generated images and see if they match the style you want. And, of course, if they don't, you can delete them and regenerate until you're satisfied. Let's keep this animation adventure rolling. Now it's time for stage 3.5. This step is optional, but it can be quite handy. The extension fine tunes each generated image to help reduce flickering. For this demo, I'm sticking with the default settings and generating the result. Next up, stage 4, upscaling. We need to upscale the images generated in the image to image tab previously because they might not match the original video's size and that won't work for the next steps. Plus, we want those images to be sharp and nice. After absorbing all the info provided, make sure to confirm the settings in automatic 11 on 1. Remember to check use original name for output file name during batch processing in the extra step. Now, let's create a folder name for the upscaled images. This will be the output folder for the files. Go to the Extras tab and click Batch from Directory. Here, copy and paste the input directory path, which in our case is the image to image keyframe folder path. Then, for the output directory, use the folder path you just created for the upscaled images. Also, ensure the width and height match the original video. In our case, we can simply copy and paste the width and height that the extension provided. The show result image checkbox. You can click it or not, it doesn't matter. Next, select the upscaler. I'm going with the 4RX Ultra Sharp option. Click generate, but be prepared. This step will take some time, so you might want to grab a coffee, have lunch, or do whatever you like while it processes. Once the upscaling is complete, you'll see that the image to image upscale key folder has all the frame images upscaled. However, there's a slight issue. The file names have a different format. There are four zeros behind each file name number. So let's move to stage five. At this point, let the extension rename the key frames and generate the EBS file for later use. Once it's done, check the image to image upscale key folder, those four zeros generated by the upscaler should be gone. Also, take a look at the CMD. The system has exported EBS extension files in your project directory. You should now have 12 of these files from Oero to 11, and we'll use them in the next step. And that brings us to stage six. Here we're going to run the EBSynth program to transform each keyframe into an animation. First, open up EBSynth. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can find the link provided in this video's description. Now, drag and drop each EPS extension file from your project directory into the software, starting from 0 to 11. This process takes some time, and you'll need to check each file as it processes. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to fast forward through this step. Let's get those animations cooking. All right, once that's done, you'll notice it has created separate subfolders for each frame output. Resist the urge to rename or delete any of these subfolders just yet. Now, let's head into stage seven, the final stretch here. We're going to export the ultimate copy of our animation video from all the frames that EBSynth AI has crafted. Scroll down and click Generate. Once it's finished, return to the project directory.
you'll find two video files nestled there. One is the standard output and the other comes with S N D. Now let's take a look at this snippet of the final result. Hmm, it looks all right, but there's still a touch of flickering. That's probably because I set the keyframe numbers to 10. Let's give the second example a shot, this time with a lower keyframe number. I'll speed up the process for this example. It's also just a few seconds long, but the keyframe settings in stage 2 are different. Alright, it's reached the final video generation, done. Now, let's take a gander at the result. Much better. So, that's a wrap for this tutorial. Based on my reviews and tests, using Epsynth Utility with ControlNet seems to perform the best. We have the flexibility to modify each generated image in the image-to-image -image steps and adjust the number of keyframes to suit our preferences. That concludes this video. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a fantastic day.